All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Harsha Medikanti. I'm Dr. Porter's fellow for the year. And today I'll be presenting the first case, which is the robotic retroperitoneal partial nephrectomy. So patient TJ is a 66-year-old lady who presented to us with a two and a half centimeter right-sided renal tumor uh, that was found incidentally on a workup done for vaginal bleeding. Uh, review systems was negative. She's pretty healthy, did have a DVT last year, uh, was treated with six months of anticoagulation, uh, which she's off now. And this occurred after a left knee surgery. Family history is non-contributory, social history is negative. She works as a nurse, no medications, and her exam is normal. Um, so her CT scans here, uh, axial scan going from cranial caudal direction. See the right kidney come into view. And there's the mass there. You can see it posteriorly located, about two and a half centimeters in size. Um, partially exophytic, pretty amenable to a retroperitoneal approach. And again, the same CT scan, but the coronal view. Going posterior now, and you can see the right kidney come into view, and then the mass at the very end, you see it right there. We gave this mass a nephrometry score of 8P. Her labs are fairly unremarkable. She has normal kidney function. Uh, staging chest x-ray was negative. Uh, we do get preoperative renograms in all our patients that undergo partial nephrectomy. And uh, the right side was uh, at 43% and the left side at 57%. Uh, again, uh, patient positioning, um, we do a full flank position. We do what we call soft positioning with pillows and blankets. Uh, and we uh, place the umbilicus at the break and fully flex the bed. Uh, this gives us as much space as possible between the, uh, the iliac uh, crest and the 12th rib. Again, this is just a posterior view. Uh, I won't go over the SI port placement in the interest of time, but for the XI port placement, we use a forearm technique. Uh, the XI arms are pretty forgiven, uh, forgiving, and so they allow us to place these ports uh, fairly close to each other. And we do a kind of a curvilinear fashion, um, placing all four arms about six centimeters apart. Um, our first incision is roughly in the mid-axillary line, uh, just above the iliac crest. Uh, you can see the 12th and 11th ribs also there marked out. And once we do that, we gain uh, entry into the retroperitoneum and then use the balloon drocar that Dr. Porter was talking about to uh, make some space. Um, when fully inflated, it's uh, football shaped. Um, and you can see Dr. Porter and Brandon here uh, doing this under direct vision. Uh, there's a robot uh, 30 degree camera going through the uh, an eight millimeter port through the balloon trocar. And we can uh, inflate uh, and look at the anatomic structures as we do so. Once we do this, we remove the balloon port uh, and place our Hassan port. This is what we're using now uh, with the XI model. Uh, and you'll see Dr. Porter work to create space and uh, place the other ports. And you know, when it's all done, it's roughly this kind of uh, uh, configuration. Again, the nice thing about the XI compared to the SI is that you can bring the robot in from any direction. Uh, the SI previously, you'd have to bring it over the patient's head, which the anesthesiologist really didn't like. Um, with the XI, you can bring it in. Uh, we do it towards the feet and then rotate the boom uh, completely. Uh, for the case itself, we use a zero degree lens. Uh, we use a fenestrated bipolar in the left hand, a scissors in the right, and a prograsp as well as for a fourth arm. So I'll quickly just, um, I want to show you guys a 3D model of, uh, of the mass we're working on today. Okay, great. So this is a model that's uh, created by a company called Zebra. They're based out of San Francisco, and they uh, rendered 3D uh, models based on CT and MRI imaging. And so we've actually used um, their models for a large number of our uh, partial nephrectomies, and uh, they're helpful, especially for the more complex tumors. So you can see. Um, the model here with all the, with the kidney, uh, the vessels, and the surrounding structures, and we can hide some of these structures we're not very interested in. So take the liver, the gallbladder, and the bone away. And you can see here the aorta, the vena cava, uh, the main renal artery, the main renal vein, and the kidney. And if you rotate it, you can kind of see where the tumor is located in a posterior, uh, along the posterior part of the kidney, superiorly located. It's partially exophytic. And the nice thing, I think, um, that Dr. Boz was talking about, if you want to do selective clamping, you, you can take a really good close look at the vessels here. So there's the main renal vein there. You can see the artery from the back here. And so 
you can uh, kind of decide how to approach um, your clamping as well as how to approach these tumors. And you can see there's an extra vein there kind of going back uh, to the back of the kidney. So there's two, two renal veins there. And furthermore, you can assess the depth of the, the tumor. So for, you know, this is pretty exophytic, but for deeper tumors, you can see if they're entering the collecting system or the sinus fat and really match out, uh, map out your approach to, uh, to retroperitoneal or transperitoneal uh, kidney surgery. So when we're in the retroperitoneal uh, configuration, it'll roughly be something like this. What's the cost of zebra? It's a great question. Russ, what's the cost of zebra? Uh, <laughs> Apparently not free. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I'll uh, I'll uh, we'll uh, cut over to Dr. Porter for the surgery. So, what is the artery branch behind the cava? Or? It's yeah. So not exactly behind the cava, but it's uh, on the lateral border of it. So if we go again from the trans view, and then rotate over. So the artery branch is kind of right along the lateral border of the cava. There. Great. Um, we'll cut over to Dr. Porter now. Thank you.